Greetings. Welcome to my living room. Uh, I'm, uh, I'm enjoying the day and uh, thought I'd make you this video. So Sandra from Germany writes, Christopher, I'm a follower. You're a great inspiration for me. Thank you. Thank you, Sandra. Uh, she goes on to explain, my 19-year-old son failed his exit exams for secondary education and now is seeking the credential through an alternate path, uh, which I think is great. However, because of the COVID-19 crisis, he must stay at home now. He sleeps until mid-afternoon, then plays computer games until 3 a.m. He refuses to do anything helpful like doing the dishes. This annoys me. How can I get through this and end up in responsibility? And how can he stop quit? So, Sandra, I think millions of parents around the world can relate to your situation. So I'm going to invest some time in giving a, a fairly complete response, although it will also be a general response. And the reason is that uh, when I do mastery work uh, with people who are trying, who I'm trying to help break through, um, I try to really understand the exact thoughts that they're having um, about what's wrong. And I don't want to make assumptions about your thoughts. Uh, and I'm never going to do that in responsibility answers when people ask me to address things. So I'll speak a little bit in generalities, but I'll also share uh, my experience with many, uh, with myself uh, and my family and, and with many others. So um, first I'll address your question about how can he stop quit? So... Uh, quit is one of the positions in the responsibility process chart. If you're watching this video and you're not familiar with it, look up the responsibility process and my name, Christopher Avery, and you'll find the responsibility process chart and you'll find quit there. So here's my question, Sandra. How do you know he's at quit? I'm not sure he's at quit. In fact, I'm not sure he even has a problem. So you have to have a problem to have triggered the responsibility process and be moving through it. So here's what I know. Uh, 19 years old, uh, free room and board, uh, no rules, no consequences for not helping out. At 19, I would have taken that deal and loved it. I wouldn't have a problem. So um, a little bit of tongue in cheek there, uh, but also a little bit poking. Uh, and part of the reason is that the responsibility process only works when self applied. So it doesn't work when we use it to label other people or make assumptions about where other people are in the process. It's a horrible management tool. It's a horrible parenting tool. Uh, it's only a tool for leading myself. It's a not, not a tool for me to judge uh, or diagnose others. So now let's talk about you, Sandra, the parent. Uh, I'm glad you asked what you did. Uh, you asked, how can I get through this? and end up in responsibility. So what you didn't explain is, what is this? How can I get through this? So this is referring to you having a problem, you having some judgment or evaluation about something being wrong. I assume what's wrong is um, that your son is uh, not doing uh, his life right now the way that you uh, would want him to, um, and as someone sharing your house. That's my assumption. So. Uh, so let's talk a little bit about that. Um, there are some um, marketing professors in the United States who wrote a book about 25 years ago uh, called The Millionaire Next Door. The Millionaire Next Door. And uh, in it, they said some pretty fascinating things. Basically what they said was that when you go into, quote, millionaire neighborhoods, those people aren't millionaires. Those people are people like doctors and lawyers who make lots of money, but that class of people also spends most of what they make. So they actually aren't millionaires. They're living uh, month to month and spending tons of money on nice houses and cars and things. What they said is that the actual millionaires are our are, are neighbors who own a dry cleaner or a barbershop or something else. Um, and they don't spend uh, on flashy things, but they invest and save. Um, and it was all based on research and it was really great. One of their chapters 
was uh, about preparing for your retirement. Um, and as I recall, there was something in there about um, the desire to rescue our children and how many people uh, rescue their children at five years old and rescue them at 10 years old and rescue them at 15 and at 20 and at 30 and at 40. And that essentially the more we rescue them, the less prepared they are to face their own struggles or face their own challenges or face their own issues. We have learned in uh, responsibility immersion and mastery, uh, we study this notion uh, that um, we, we make assumption that uh, our kids aren't taking responsibility for their lives, but what we often find is that we keep rescuing them because their situation gives us anxiety. And so we don't like to feel that anxiety. So by us rescuing them, then we uh, make ourselves feel better. So sometimes the lesson that we learn is that I have to be willing to allow my offspring to solve their own problems. Um, this has never been said better than by my own mentor who uh, had a time where his uh, young adult daughter returned to live home um, but began abusing uh, drugs. And uh, he said it was the hardest thing he ever did to um, kick her out of the house and say, I'm sorry, uh, you cannot live here and do that. Um, <clears throat> so uh, this is kind of an interesting situation where we have to be willing uh, to face our anxiety and, and make our own choices. Uh, Peter Kostenbaum is a corporate philosopher. Uh, and uh, he has, uh, you can go to pib.net, pib.net, and you can subscribe to his weekly leadership thought. Uh, and his weekly leadership thought from November 17th of 2008, it was number 387, is called Personal Responsibility Paradox. And I want to read it to you. He says this, he says, taking personal responsibility for getting others to implement strategy is the leader's key polarity. It's the existential paradox of holding yourself 100% accountable, excuse me, responsible for the fate of your organization and assuming absolutely no responsibility for the choices made by other people. That applies to your children too. You are 100% responsible for how your children turn out and you accomplish that by teaching them that they are 100% responsible for how they turn out. He goes on to say, so how do you motivate people? Not with techniques, but by risking yourself with a personal, lifelong commitment to greatness by demonstrating courage. You don't teach it as much as challenge it into existence. You cannot choose for others. All you can do is inform them that you cannot choose for them. Let me say that again. You cannot choose for others. All you can do is inform them that you cannot choose for them. In most cases, that in, that in itself will be a strong motivator for the people whom you want to cultivate. The leader's role is less to heal or to help than to enlarge the capacity for responsible freedom. So I don't know if this is uh, helping or confusing, Sandra, um, but in answer to how do I get through this, every time I ask that, no matter what the situation is, the answer is, well, Christopher, what do you want about this situation that you have control over, that you can choose, right? You can't choose for anybody else, right? But you also don't have to rescue anybody else and you can't help them learn if you keep rescuing them. So send me your questions at hello at responsibility.com. 
and I look forward to hearing what you think about this video.